At the beginning of this chapter, we discuss the difference between arrays and patterns in FreeCAD. Such array tools are available in the draft workbench and can be leveraged in a part design workflow. In this tutorial, you'll learn that accessing geometry from a part design body in other workbenches is usually straightforward. The real challenge is using the geometry within the active part design body. And that's where the shape binder becomes essential. Let's demonstrate this by filling a gap in the part design's capabilities. And that's patterning along a path. So I'm in FreeCAD, starting a new document. I'm in the part design. We create a body and a sketch. This is going along the X, Y plane. We're creating a simple disc shape in here with a hole in the middle. Using the circle, we'll add two circles, an outer and an inner. Right click to cancel the tool. Use the dimensioning tool. We set the inner circle to 20 millimeters and the outer to 100. From here, we close the sketch. The sketch is selected. We apply a pad and set this to two millimeters. My aim is to do something similar to that I did in the previous patterning tutorial, and that's create a number of circle holes on this face. But I want to create a pattern of holes across a path and then create either a polar array or a multi-transform. Let's create the path. I'm going to select the top face of the pad and create a sketch. I'll be using a B-spline, click the B-spline, and we'll connect up to the center point. The reason why I'm doing this is to show you properties that we will change in a moment. Normally, I would create a path here. Cross the part that I want to pattern against. I'm placing the B-spline coincident to the center point, coming out and clicking and adding nodes as we move across and circling out to the edge. I'm going to click once more and then right click to set the B-spline. With B-splines, you can turn off these combs and the features. I'm going to right click to cancel, select the B-spline, come up to sketch and come down to sketch a visual. And we have the show hide B-spline layers. And from here, we can turn on and off the ones that we want. I'm just going to leave them for now. So the B-spline is my path. Let's close and rename the sketch to path sketch. Now I'm going to sketch a circle for the hole. Again, I'm selecting the face, creating the sketch, and then sketching a simple circle. Remember, we said normally that we will place the B-spline across this section the same with the circle. I'll start it at the point the B-spline starts. As the B-spline starts in the center, I'm just going to add a circle in here. Right click to cancel. Let's add some dimensions. Diameter of say five millimeters and hit okay. Let's hit close and I'll rename that sketch to whole sketch. I have all the component parts ready to pattern. As there is no patterning tools for patterning along the path, we have to use the draft workbench. Within the draft workbench, we have a number of array tools. They're available for modifications and array tools. We're going to be using the path link array. There is two path arrays. The path link array is much more memory efficient. First, we need to select the item that we want to array. In this case, it's the circle or the hole. We can select the sketch or select it from the screen. Next, we control select the path. Again, we can select it from the 3D view or from the tree view. Come up to modifications and come down to array tools and use the path link array. We can see it's taken and we have a number of circles along this path. If we look to the left, we see the path array and in the data tab, we have the count. Increasing the count increases the number of occurrences. We just click off to a set. Now we see that the circle, the first hole starts here, and the last one is off the edge. So we can either take the path and place it in the correct position along with the whole sketch, or use the path array 
and set some offset. We have a start offset here, which if I set to 15, this will set first hole 15 millimeters away from the starting point. The same with the end offset. Let's set that to 15. This obviously compacts the sketched holes within. Come back to path array, and I'm going to change the end offset, to say five millimeters, and drop the count to six. Once I'm happy with my array, I then need to apply an operation. I'm going to come up and hide the path sketch. The whole sketch is already hidden. If I look inside the path array, we can see the whole sketch is there. The path array, we look down, we can see the elements it's using. The path object is the path sketch and the base is the whole sketch. We've now got to use this path array in the part design to pocket against. Let's come over the part design and look at the model. We can't take the path array and create a simple pocket against this. It won't allow us, saying it must belong to an active body. And it's giving you an idea of what to use. Consider using a shape binder or a base feature. So if we take the path array, we can see our body is active, it's in bold, and then create a sub shape binder against that. We can now see it's been pulled into the body as a binder. The path array sits outside the body, so now we can hide it as it's been linked in. And now it's just a case of taking the binder and creating a pocket against it. Pocketing to the depth we want and hitting OK. The binder has become hidden. If not, just hide the binder. We've now got a pocket. With that pocket, we can apply further operations to it. For example, take the pocket and use a multi transform. I can start right clicking and say add a linear pattern and we'll pattern around about. Let's go eight millimeters with an occurrence of two and hit it. Okay. And then I can right click again and add a polar pattern and increase the occurrences along the axis. At the moment it's base X. We need the Z axis and we increase the occurrences to how many we want and then hit okay. As you can see, the shape binder is a powerful and essential tool that bridges workflows to allow the integration of geometry from different workbenches. In this case, unlocking gaps in pattern operations that would otherwise be impossible in the part design workbench. For now, that ends the chapter on patterning, but we'll see the pattern operation appear again in later chapters from time to time. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one to start a new chapter. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.